Welcome to our video guide on how to choose the right pipe insulation thickness in the UK. Pipe insulation plays an important role in maintaining the effectiveness and efficiency of heating and cooling systems. It is essential to choose the right pipe insulation thickness for a given application to ensure that it performs as desired. The UK climate is known for its wide range of temperatures, from extremes of hot to cold weather, making it necessary to select appropriate insulation for all seasons. In addition, Domestic water systems or industrial and commercial applications may require different levels of insulation depending on their operating conditions. Furthermore, there are various types of insulation materials available that offer different levels of thermal resistance and other properties such as sound absorption and fire resistance. The advice given herein is general in nature and is not supposed to be a substitute for seeking professional advice from manufacturers, consultants or referring to official guidelines such as those from British standards. We accept no responsibility for the incorrect thickness of insulation being selected and installed. It is the responsibility of the specifier and installer to make sure they are installing the correct thickness, material and cladding as per BS 5422 or any other building regulation requirements. British Standard 5422 plays a key role in decisions surrounding pipe insulation thickness. This standard provides guidelines for thermal insulating materials for pipes, tanks, vessels, ductwork and equipment operating in the temperature range of minus 40 degrees Celsius to plus 700 degrees Celsius. Following this standard ensures we are operating within acceptable guidelines for effectiveness and efficiency. Please be aware that if you are watching this video elsewhere outside of the UK, the advice in general will hold good, but the specific thicknesses and materials required when insulating pipes will be set out in official government guidelines in your jurisdiction. ASHRAE in the US, for example. It's probably obvious to most that the thicker the insulation, the better the thermal insulation. Well, thicker insulation can also be more expensive and difficult to install. The laws of diminishing returns also make it less efficient to install pipe insulation that is thicker than what has been established as optimal in controlled tests in a laboratory. It is important to strike a balance between cost, practicality and performance when selecting pipe insulation thickness in order to ensure that it is A. practical and B. financially feasible. We will go into how is pipe insulation measured, why we shouldn't choose pipe lagging that's too thin, and also the impracticalities of pipe lagging, which is too thick amongst other things. So let's get into the thick of it. The wall thickness refers to how much insulation the product has. For example, if your pipe lagging is said to be 25mm thick, it means it has 25mm of insulation on both sides of the opening, which will envelop the pipe. In the UK, there are different guidelines for water pipe insulation thickness depending on whether the pipework is located, in domestic properties or non-domestic properties such as commercial and industrial buildings. Examples of commercial and industrial could include anything from a supermarket to a factory involved in heavy industry. The requirements for pipe insulation on residential buildings are much less stringent than commercial and industrial buildings, which have much more onerous obligations for the specifier and installer of the pipe insulation. There is less space to install pipe insulation on residential properties, where pipework is usually clipped onto joists, underfloor boards, etc., where space is tight. Finally, industrial and commercial properties consume far more energy than the average household, so it makes sense to require thicker insulation on pipes to save on energy consumed. The UK Building Regulations Approved Document L, 2010, provides guidance on necessary insulation thicknesses for pipes in residential buildings. However, this is just a very brief overview of what's actually required, and it's much better to refer to BS 5422, which itself is referred to multiple times in Document L. BS 5422 specifies the requirements for thermal insulation materials used on pipes, tanks, vessels, ductwork and equipment in specified applications and conditions ranging from minus 40 degrees Celsius to 700 degrees Celsius. It includes Pipe Insulation Thickness Charts UK, and is meant to be used by designers, specifiers, contractors and manufacturers of thermal insulation. Although it is more than just a pipe insulation thickness guide, BS 5422 contains plenty of charts to help determine how thick should pipe insulation be. When determining the right pipe insulation thickness for a project, several factors must be taken into account. One of these is the type of material used to insulate the pipes, Different materials have different thermal properties which can affect their effectiveness as insulation when exposed to temperature changes. The thermal conductivity of the insulation is known as the lambda or the K value and is expressed in watts per metre or watts per metre Kelvin. 
The K value is a measure of the thermal conductivity of an insulation material. It is a ratio of the rate of heat transfer through the material to the temperature difference on either side of it. The lower the K value, the better the insulation material is at preventing heat transfer. This is converse to R value, where a higher number means better insulation. However, R value is rarely used in the UK to measure pipe insulation performance. The K value of a material can be determined through laboratory testing and is often used to compare the thermal performance of different insulation materials. Manufacturers will have conducted these tests which are verified by third parties, which allows us to know their K value. Pipe or bore size is a major factor when determining how thick pipe insulation should be. Bore size refers to the diameter of the cavity in the centre of the pipe lagging, which will accommodate the actual pipe itself. Different types of pipes require different insulation thicknesses in order to effectively provide energy efficiency and cost savings. The type of pipe that is being insulated determines the recommended thickness, which will be dependent on the environment and application. The emissivity of the surface of a pipe plays an important role in determining its heat loss. The emissivity of a material is a measure of its ability to radiate energy in the form of infrared radiation. Materials with higher emissivity are able to absorb and emit more infrared radiation and therefore dissipate more heat. Conversely, materials with lower emissivity, more reflective, are less efficient at absorbing and radiating heat. Therefore, the emissivity of the surface of a pipe can affect heat loss by either increasing or decreasing the amount of heat that is either absorbed and then dissipated via convection and conduction, or radiated away from the surface of the pipe. In addition to the emissivity of a pipe surface, other factors such as surface roughness cause a larger surface area to be exposed to the environment, which increases the rate of heat loss. Examples of high emissivity surfaces would be red oxide-painted steel pipes and black foam pipe lagging like nitrile rubber. This would mean that more insulation thickness is required for this combination of pipe plus lagging than lower emissivity options. The ambient temperature of the environment in which the pipes are situated is one of the most important factors in determining pipe insulation wall thickness. As the ambient temperature increases or decreases, more insulation is typically needed to keep the temperature of the pipe within the desired operating temperature range. In general, the preferred outcome of pipe insulation is for thermal performance, as it helps to protect pipes from cold temperatures and conserve energy. Acoustic performance, fire rating performance and other considerations should all be taken into account, but thermal performance should be the priority. However, in some scenarios, the priority when insulating pipes is to protect them from fire and also to reduce noise transmission. Insulation alone cannot guarantee complete protection against the freezing of water in pipes under all circumstances. If the ambient temperature stays low enough for an extended period and the water flow in the pipe is slow or stagnant, no amount of insulation will prevent the water from freezing. However, insulation does slow down the cooling process and delay the onset of freezing, potentially avoiding ice formation if the water is not stagnant for too long or if more heat is supplied to the system than is lost through the insulation metal supports, and hangers. Supplementary heating, even in specific areas, can also help. It's important to keep in mind that A, the smaller the pipe, and B, the cooler the contents of the pipe, will need more insulation than larger, warmer pipes. There are various options available to insulate your pipes, so choose one that meets your specific requirements. Insulating your pipes can provide numerous benefits. For top-quality pipe lagging and other insulation essentials, Visit our pipe insulation section at Buy Insulation Online. Links can be found in the description below. We offer the lowest possible prices from leading UK brands. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.